Bites. Fire, fire. <laughs> it's episode 128. How crazy is that? Crazy. Yeah. What am I drinking? Out of my sloth glass. I love this glass. Um, this is called a beignet au lait. It's an imperial blonde from New Orleans. Yes, I love it. Um, what a weekend in New Orleans. So much fun. It's, it's my favorite American city. But, yeah, Charleston's second, but Charleston doesn't have the spookiness. They have the history, but they don't have the spooky town. I love spooky town. Uh, Michael Somerville uh, opened, in case some of you were asking who that man was that went up there first at the Joy, at the Joy, the Joy Theater. In New Orleans. Uh, yeah, the crowd was great. I went to uh, the St. Louis Cemetery. It's actually called the St. Louis Cemetery, where uh, that tour where Marie Laveau is buried. Salouis. Yeah, the Salouis Cemetery. It, here's a weird thing, though. You used to, I remember being able to go in there on your own. Mm-hmm. Then it was, oh, now it's only tours. Right. So you had to be, be on a tour to go through because they're, ter- they're worried about the wear and tear and the plaster and all that shit. I get it. But now the Catholic Church was like, yeah, maybe we just do that for ourselves. No way. Yeah, they own the land. No! Yeah, I'm like, so you have to buy a ticket through the one thing or you can't go because I went on a walking tour that I thought I was going to get to go in there and the guy's like, good news, bad news, we're not going in there. I'm like, what? It said it? No, I know. It was like, wow. whatever. So, um, so if you go there and you want to go on that one, make sure you go to the Catholics, okay? <laughs> Because Lewis goes, do they let Jews in? I go, do you mean now or to be buried? <laughs> I said, Lou, they didn't bury Protestants in there till the late 60s, so I don't think we've gotten to the Jews yet. No. We're not there. Give us time, Lou. Give us time. We have to, we have to okay it. Um, and then he was like, Marie Laveau, who was uh, partially black, a part black. Uh, she was Catholic? I go, yeah. We, the Catholics made everybody Catholic. They just reclaimed souls without people's permissions. Nobody gave a shit. Um, the, it's so crazy though. This is a little something, but this is where I knew it. So the, all, most of the, well, all of the tombs are above ground Mm because of the flooding and all that, but you get a family tomb and it's forever. Well, unless you all died at the same time, this would cause a problem. But Mm -hmm. so to say my grandpa dies, we put him in there. Then a normal lifespan by the time I die, because those tombs are above ground Mm -hmm. because of the heat in New Orleans it can get up to over 200 degrees in there. Whoa. So basically, you're being cremated. Wow. So then they go in and they sweep grandpa out. with. It's literally oh. called a 10-foot pole. That's Stop. why the expression, I wouldn't go near it with a 10-foot pole came from. Or at least, at least that's what they said. I do feel like a lot of the people in New Orleans, there are a lot of people, like a lot of people in Ireland, yeah. they might be winging this. I'm not really sure this is exactly <laughs> what happened. It's like in Ireland, everywhere you go, they're like, St. Patrick was here. Oh, my God. That guy got around, according to the Irish, more than anybody on earth. But, uh, yeah, so your family tomb can really, unless you all die at the same time, go on forever because you're, you become dust again within the thing. We go sweep you out, put me in. Grandpa's gone. Enter Kathleen. Wow. Yeah. So wow. is. <laughs> Oh, I went everywhere. The French Quarter. It's so much fun. I just, I, me and Michael, when we went to the oldest bar, you know, I'd have been there, but he, he had the oldest bar in New Orleans. Totally Lafitte. fun. It reminds Lafitte. me of Temple Bar. And yeah, it's Lafitte's. Yeah. It reminds me of Temple Bar. Then we found Irish daycare at an Irish bar. That, yeah, what was it called? Boondock Saint. Boondock Saint. Yeah. <laughs> that lady was super nice. Everybody that worked there. It was just a, just a great show. And then, um, I got, uh, there's a place called Oceana. Yeah, gumbo. <laughs> and then I have, Michael never had their, they have grilled oysters that then they put Parmesan sheet. Like, I don't even care about food. But favorite food by far, Cajun. Yes. And you just can't get it hardly anywhere except south. And, you know, Biloxi, my friend Trey from Mary Mahoney's in Biloxi, little plug there for the best restaurant um, yeah. probably I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, he came over, their crab claws. Yeah, but anyway. That's now I sound like Lewis, where all you do is talk about the food you ate. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. Oceana, yeah, the beer, all of it, it was just a blast. Um, then at the show, so many things. We'll make this. I'll go through this pretty quickly because we have a lot to get to. We have a Ralphie update. Whoa! Yeah, the no. little French bulldog <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got it. It's a great update. It's a great update. So these kids, this was amazing. The children. 
they were young. I don't didn't ask how old, but young to me, anyways. That means probably under forty. Um, they took a laundry basket, like a round one, and threaded the whole thing with beads. No way. Yeah, the venue's gonna send it back to me because I couldn't get it. I couldn't. I was afraid if I tried to smash it and this big luggage piece, I, it would break. Whatever. It was covered in bees. It was blinking. A blinking laundry basket came backstage. And even the security people were like, well, this is a one-time only. And I'm like, that's amazing. What's in there? One of the things I'm going to eat, their names were Ruby and Remy. I took a picture with them and met them backstage. It was so, it was so much work. And you need a laundry basket. I, I do need a laundry basket. And Baby Cat will love to play with that. <laughs> By the way, oh, I didn't bring up the Yoda plant. Holy shit. I'll do it next week. The grass grew four inches on Lou's thing. Baby cat is, I'm putting a video up. Baby cat loves it. She's wow. going to town on it right now. <laughs> she's out there just nah, 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 like the, <laughs> I think she's eating. It's sort of like she's getting the water she's, out or something. Yeah. Cause she's discarding the empties. Oh. Yeah. Like beer cans. She, she eats a stem and then flicks it out. But in the laundry basket, I was like, what is this? This is a Zulu coconut. Cool. The girls gave me. Supposed to be very good luck. They're at the parade, the Mardi Gras parade, which backtracking one minute. So I walked down to Jackson Square because this is an artist lady who makes these wax things and I wanted to find her because I wanted to get another one because yep. uh, the website, I don't know, in COVID, whatever, wasn't really up, didn't have a lot on it. So uh, when I went down there, I'm like, why are all these St. Patrick's Day people out here? I mean, there were floats of Irish cottages, oh. blah, blah, blah. And I, one guy seemed friendly enough, walked in the bar and I go, St. Pat's Day isn't for two more weekends. He's like, well, we got to get a practice run in. I'm like, oh, my God. These people down here are so serious about their parades. They had a whole practice run. And then I was in a bar later and saw it go by. I'm like, I'll be damned. They're not kidding. I'm like, I don't know what we're practicing. It's just ready, set, go. What? It's just the Irish coming up with two reasons to drink. Right. <laughs> Two weekends that I have to be down there. I have to get down there with my people. But anyway, in my laundry basket was this coconut. It's got a Z on it, and then twenty three. So at the Mardi Gras parade, the Zulu. Um, it's the first day of Mardi Gras. Yeah, they. That's for the year. I was like, oh, it's my dad's birthday. How how <laughs> the twenty third? I'm like, I didn't even right. Yeah. It's twenty five. But they're supposed to be good luck. But I said to the kids, don't give me your good luck coconut. You should keep it. And they're like, well, we actually caught a couple. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> But this is just interesting. So listen to this, because I knew nothing of this. I have never been to New Orleans for Mardi Gras. It just seems overwhelming. It's very crazy. Yeah, I think I missed that era. Like in your 20s when you would have done that, I was working or something. That's I don't know. Um, so these coconuts, um, uh, it's, it's what everybody wants to walk away with. And they gave me theirs. How sweet is that? Uh, riders loads hundreds of coconuts onto floats ahead of the parade. Mardi Gras morning. However, one year, every reveler walked away without a decorated coconut. History shows that Zulu introduced the golden nuggets as they were known in the early 1900s, but it's not so distant history. Not one single coconut was thrown to the crowds. Sad. Of all the throws to rain down on Mardi Gras, the Zulu coconut is of the highest demand. The coconut made its debut in 1910 in a dulled form, natural and hairy with no gold or glitter. Because I said, is this real? Yeah. It is real. Yeah. It's a real coconut. Well, then Amy, <laughs> the lady working backstage with us, goes, well, I don't know if there's milk in it or anything. I'm like, well, Amy, I wasn't going to, like, drill a hole and <laughs> see if I could drink coconut milk. Zulu historian Emeritus Claris Becknell explained the coconut came because they couldn't afford to buy beads. So a guy by the name of Lloyd Lucas and some others went into the French market, and they purchased a sack of coconuts, and that was thrown. That was all they threw in the beginning. It eventually looked more like what we see today, but they were much more labor-intensive to create. In the past, we used these coconuts in the raw farm. And if you notice, they make a little natural face. So we took a sharp object, then they started decorating them, then they shaved the hair off. It took a blow in 1987 after lawsuits from people claiming they were injured by throwing coconuts. They're not that heavy. No. I mean, it's heavy. I don't want one thrown at my head. And if that blow's coming, you know. Well, also, it, right. Heads up. Right. Whose fault is that? You're waiting. You're drunk coconut. and looking at the ground and get whacked in the head by a coconut? That is on you. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> Zulu couldn't get insured that year. Thus, the time tradition went away. It was a very different vibe. Guys didn't like guys like Clarence didn't did little colored walnuts. Nobody no, wants a walnut. No, a walnut. Um, 
After the state legislature passed the coconut bill to clear the club from liability for alleged injuries, the coconut came back. But still more changes were needed to ensure safety. About seven years ago, no coconut. Uh, Riders of um, they they can they they were saying now they can toss them, or you oh, can yeah. put it in a plastic bag and like hand, hand it. it to people? Um, uh, each rider typically gets a hundred and to two hundred coconuts to decorate and throw. That's awesome! It's f- fantastic. Now I want to go because now I want to see that. I'll put up with the crowds if I can see the and the Zulu float. I'll just tell you one little thing because I found it interesting. Uh, inspired by a play, there's a Zulu organization was formed in 1909, and they crowned William Story the first Zulu king. The group was officially incorporated as the Zulu Social Aid and Pleasure Club in 1916. Apparently, they raised tons of money for charity, and they do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so good for them. That's great. Yeah, the float is crazy. <laughs> they have a picture of the first one. It was fairly small when it started. There weren't many floats around. There was no real route. Back then, I don't think people really had their whole thing going on like we do now. But um, it's still going, and I got a coconut. That's awesome. So lucky me. Very cool. They also had in that bag, I'm going to taste these. What are we trying today? No, those are the other ones. Evil Eye. Um, oh, right, there's the cheese wheeze. Cheese wheeze. Barbecue cheese. New Orleans kind. Oh, my God. Wow. They're really good. It's Elmer's New Orleans Kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue Kiwis. cheese curls. If you like barbecue, spot on. They're actually really good. good? I'll have another. I think yeah. your, your past life was somewhere. I think in my past life I was somewhere in the deep south. Not like Tennessee or Kentucky. Like deeper. Yeah. New Orleans. You're all into that. I'm into all of it. Yeah. The thing is, too, if you Google Ann Rice House... There's like a hundred in New Orleans. She owns so much shit, but I think I found the real one. I'm not sure I did, but I told myself it was. So what the hell's the difference? They all look alike once you get in the Garden right. District. There's so many tours if you like history, and the history is so complicated because the French were there, the Spanish were there, there were free people of color. The it just the whole like a lot of that wasn't going on anywhere else. Um, it's got its own little deal going on. Um, Heather sent me pralines, got them. And she said you, that your mom might like them. She will love them. Yes. And they're going straight to my mom. Praline's another big thing. They're super. Um, Termite Teresa sent a nice card just saying that um, she lost uh, her fiance in December of 2020. The pub, pubcast um, was a true way to, uh, and true crime. She likes true crime. It helped me feel not so lonely during a terrible time. Um, yeah. And she introduced me to her mother-in-law too. So boom, cool. way to go. That so many beers came backstage. I think the one security guy thought it, like me or Michael. I kept blaming Michael. <laughs> I'm like, Michael's the one drinking 8%, not me. I'm just sitting here with a milk ultra right now because I have to work. <laughs> it was a good time after. <laughs> Termite Geraldine brought a bunch of beers backstage. Um, uh, oh, and our sister-in-law was a cemetery guide. I could have jumped on that. I mean, the one I went on was fine. I didn't particularly like the tour guide. At least he didn't try to be over-the-top funny or make us engage. I hate those tours. Yeah. Where are we at? And then we all have to go, St. Louis Cemetery. Like, just information. Stop. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, information. This is Geraldine and Cedric Barker. I got all the beers, um, which was great. My, Michael's a beer monster, too. Um, and then somebody made me this little guitar man. It's coming with the basket. Yep. Um, here's a tiny banjo. Oh, it's a banjo, yeah. Mm-hmm. We've seen it three times in the last nine months. Oh, my gosh. Um, Dottie and Karen, Dallas, Texas. Got it, Dottie. Don't you guys think this stuff doesn't get backstage? And then uh, this one really made me laugh. I love how the security guards just wait for the Midge and Lori said, I know. Well, I was like, huh, nobody's been back with anything. It was fine, but it was noticeable. And then like, I hear bam, bam, bam on the back door, and it's a dude with a trolley. He's like, this is all for you. I don't know how you're supposed to get this home. I'm like, don't, don't you worry about that. I got connections. Mama Termite is um, These two are from St. Louis, Midge and Lori. Uh, got you some Schlafly Park Lager to try. Brewed to support Tower Grove Park, which is a great park. Mm-hmm. My sister used to play softball down there. By the way, this made me laugh so hard. This is very strictly St. Louis. So, by the way, this is what I call a weirdo beer. 
Because if it ain't an Anheuser Busch product, it's a weirdo beer. <laughs> that is exactly how I grew up. Don't you bring one foreign thing in here? There better be Bud Light or Bush Light or Bush or Bud in that cool. Like yeah. you pull something out of a cooler. It was usually the the twenty something nephews would go, "Hey, have you tried this?" And we're like, "No, I don't no. think you understand. What the fuck is that? Get that out of my cooler." It's Happy St. Patrick's Day. Very funny. And last but not least, James and Rochelle sent a beta, the Amber Lager, which I had two of after the show. Delicious. Yes, and then I shared. The crew is always very happy because they get to um, help. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. That was New Orleans. Moving on. Um, oh, I got to try my swap. So there's there's a lot of hot sauce stores. Uh, there's also the Marie Laveau Voodoo Shop, and I did buy two T-shirts. Nice. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about voodoo. As an older Catholic who doesn't go to church enough. If I went to, if I had a church like the one in, in Jackson Square in New Orleans, I'd go. Right. It's beautiful. It makes you feel insignificant and just tells you nothing matters. Mm -hmm. Just going to die anyway. Right. Who the hell cares? But um, I bought a couple of t-shirts. I don't know about the voodoo. Oh, that, cool. it, what, yeah. You can wash them a lot. Yeah, well, I wear my <laughs> other one. I have to decide if voodoo is good luck or bad luck. Because as a Catholic, you're told to not open any portals. I'm a big fan of shut all portals. Mm -hmm. No Ouija board. Mm -hmm. I get why people play with it, but I saw The Exorcist. I'm never going to get over it. Yeah, That's what let all the problems in. Yes. <laughs> I mean, tarot cards? Uh-uh. Yeah. No. I don't care if people do it, but I don't I don't know. I'll have to do some more. What do you guys, termites, think? Is it good or bad? Or is it somewhere in the middle? This swamp dragon la made me laugh because it, 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 says, it says it has no nutritional value. No. <laughs> um, so many hot sauce places. If you're into hot sauce, just fabulous. It, there's nothing I don't like about it. I would move to New Orleans. Yeah. I'm not sure how safe it is. Yeah. How's your hot sauce? Yeah, really hot. <laughs> swamp wow. Does it taste like bourbon? No. It's very hot. This is the problem. That's why I like the Pepper Palace. Have you guys ever been in a Pepper <laughs> Palace? <laughs> no, it, there's one in Charleston. There's one in New Orleans. They're all over the place. That's why I, like the Pepper I love the Pepper Palace because they have every single hot sauce in a little thing that you can try, so you're not burning something that's gonna burn your face off. That's hygienic. <laughs> no, they do it really um, classy. It's really classy. There's little tiny ramekins, Stop. plastic things. Yeah, in the New Orleans, because you can walk anywhere with a drink. I walked right in with a beer. Nobody cared. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so what are we watching? Before we get to updates, we're watching. Oh, what? My evil eye voodoo chips. Wow, they look hot, too. Whoa. Look at that color. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good. They're really good. Yeah. You know. Zaps. Zaps. Mm. They're best of use by July 2023. New Orleans kettle style evil eye. <laughs> Love it. Um, oh, and if you watch American Horror Story, Coven, you can go see where they filmed a lot of that. Really? Mm-hmm. Cool. Super cool. Well, and uh, 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 Madame Delphine LaLaurie, the, the crazy lady. Yeah. Kathy Bates. Mm -hmm. You can go look at that house. You can't go in. Someone lives in there. Or they own it anyway. They're not letting tours. That would be a scary tour anyway. Is, uh, um, your, Honor, your, Honor your Honor is filmed there. Kate, go, go watch Your Honor. It's so good. I, every time it's over on Sunday night, I'm so sad. I'm like, God damn it, just release them all. You can't do this to addicts. No. You can't do this. No, um, I also watched... Well, I'm re-watching the Waco thing that's on because a new Waco thing is coming out called The Aftermath. Oh, really? I don't know. It's supposed yeah. to be good. There's another one called The Twelfth Victim. Mm -hmm. It's Charles Stalkwalker Stalk or something. And this... Stalk... Stalk no. Stalkbach. No. Stalk. Google it. A, a guy and his girl killed 13 people in Nebraska. This was like in the 50s. How have I never heard of these people? The show's called The Twelfth Victim, and Charles Starkweather? Starkweather. Starkweather, mm -hmm. yeah. Lewis knew about him. 
He's like, yeah, Kathleen, that's what the whole album Badlands that Bruce Springsteen did. And then there was a movie with Charlie Sheen and Sissy Spacek when she's young. I'd miss the whole thing. But go watch The Twelfth Victim. I think it was on Paramount Plus, but I can't tell anymore because they keep now they jump shit around where they're like, well, it's on Showtime, but then it's on Paramount Plus. Right. Well, just Google it. I, but it was phenomenal. The other thing I watched was Full Swing because I like golf, but it was not good. And if you're not a golf person, I don't even understand why you would have watched more than four four seconds of it. <laughs> they needed a story editor. They, yeah, they got like they give. I there's a young guy, my, Matthew Fitzpatrick, good golfer, mm-hmm. um, the British kid, I think is he Brit. I think <laughs> yes. nice enough, but he didn't need an hour. No. Combine him with two other young guys that nobody really knows a ton about. They get their little here's your ten minute segment, twelve minute mm-hmm. segment, and then we move on. I don't know. I didn't really understand it, and I am a golf fan, but it didn't work for me. <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> All right, update. Oh, this is so great. Ralphie the jerk, the little Frenchie, <laughs> is making progress. What does that mean? Well, they said, I told you, they're uh, going to put him through a training program. Exactly. Niagara Falls, New York. There's an update on Ralphie the jerk. We first told you about Ralphie, who was up for adoption at the Niagara SPCA. But Ralphie came with some challenges. They had a hard time getting him adopted. The shelter, uh, um... Back in January, shared that at first glance, he's an ad- adorable, highly sought-after young dog. People should be banging down doors, but in reality, he's a jerk. According to the shelter, for an SPCA person to say that, yeah. then he got adopted, then he was returned, and they wanted to ensure that he was ready for his next. They would have enrolled him in an intensive six-week board and training program, wow. and after the first week of training, things are looking up for Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> they posted a video of Ralphie in training and learning to get accustomed to the vacuum and the mop, which he has not been fond of. Oh. <laughs> He's also learning to not be reactive in his crate. Oh, I bet that got weird. Because <laughs> I've heard mustard, Ron's Frenchie, when he growls and shit. It's like a possessed tiny piglet. Like, he's just like... <laughs> it's not normal dog sounds. No, it's... <laughs> it's all sinusy. He's also, um, he already knows some basic commands. Training has been relatively e- easy, and Ralphie is treat motivated. Of course he is. The shelters the, the, determined to find him a great home, and here's who they recommend not apply. Believers that all Ralphie needs is love. He will exploit that. <laughs> Those who think our restriction of no other animals and no kids do not apply to them, just no. <laughs> Ralphie has a bite history. You do not want that for your child, two-legged or four-legged, but possibly three. Um, yeah. That's funny. Uh, um, his, his board, board, uh, boarding and training is six grand. They're hoping Whoa. to raise the money. Oh, my God. I know. Surely there's a Frenchie lover out there that has Ron. time. Yeah, but Ron. He's yeah, he's retired, but Ron doesn't even monitor his own dog's behavior. I mean, I don't think, yeah. I don't think Ron's the guy that's going to be up for some serious training. No. Update! Oh, this is a long update. I'm going to test your memory, termites. Yeah. Do you remember when we talked about, because you know I'm obsessed with drug lords, Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos? Yes. Yes. Well, here's an update. Because they keep reproducing. He brought them over. They're not, obviously, indigenous to South America. Move over, cocaine bear. Cocaine hippos are taking over the spotlight in one South American country. Colombia wants to move 70 hippopotamuses that live near Pablo Escobar's former ranch to two other countries as a part of a plan to control the booming population. The animals, descendants of four imported illegally from Africa during by the late drug lord in the 1980s, have spread far beyond the Hacienda Napoles Ranch about 120 miles from Bogota along the Magdalena River. Now, if you watch the Pablo Escobar stuff on Netflix, there's a scene. Mm-hmm. So he had these hippo. Hippos are mean and dangerous. Yeah. And he had, he had four of them floating around like a pond mm-hmm. somewhere on his property. And if you didn't behave and stuff, mm-hmm. boom, you got thrown to the hippos. No. Yep. 
Environmental authorities estimate there are 130 hippos in the area, um, and their population could reach 400 within the next de- decade. Oh hippos are territorial. They weigh up to three tons, and they're one of the most aggressive animals on Earth, according to National Geographic. They can snap a canoe in half with their powerful jaws, and they kill about 500 people a year in Africa. I think they kill more things than anything on Earth. More people. Yeah. Yeah. The herbivore mammals do not have a natural predator, and scientists say they're a potential problem for the biodiversity since their feces change the composition of rivers. They also say and could impact the habitat of animals like the manatees. Uh, if all goes as planned, the hippos would be transported to Mexico and India. Well, why would you do that to Mexico? They don't have any, right? I don't, I don't think, so. think so. No. The idea to move them out has been forming for more than a year. The plan is to focus on hippos living in rivers surrounding the ranch, not those inside the ranch because they're in a controlled environment. Ecuador, the Philippines, and Botswana have also expressed interest in relocating the hippos to their countries. Uh, how do you do it? Here's the plan. They will be lured with food into large iron containers and transferred by truck to the international airport in the city of Rio Negro, about 90 miles away. From there, they're flown to India and Mexico. 60 hippos go to the Green Zoological Rescue and Rehabilitation in India, and 10 go to zoos and sanctuaries in Mexico. Okay, so they're not just letting them loose. What zoo can afford 10 hippos? How much it cost to feed those beasts? Yeah. Yeah, because my friend Kevin, the vet, um, His official name. Kevin Dr. Kevin Fitzgerald mm-hmm. uh, in Denver, um, he always said, were these people who raise these exotic animals and then they don't want them anymore, or they realize, oh, shit, I shouldn't have a lion in my apartment. <laughs> the problem is the zoos don't have enough space yeah. or funds to take all those. Right. So I don't know. Um. It's a more humane alternative proposal uh, than the alternate proposal of exterminating them as an invasive species. Well, you're probably not going to succeed with that anyway. So, yeah, let's start moving them. Update! (laughs) (laughs) This is a sad little update. Well, did you guys watch? I told you guys, told termites, if you're interested, the Leonard Skinner uh, documentary on Netflix was phenomenal. And I'm a, you're... I would say I'm your average Leonard Skinner fan. Okay. Yeah, I like a lot of it. Um, I wouldn't be like in depth okay. like I would be with Queen Stevie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you watch the documentary, there's a bearded man in there named Gary, mm-hmm. and he was the last original member of Leonard Skinner, and he has died at 71. Oh, I know. And my sister goes, What do you die of? I go, When you're in Leonard Skinner, I'd say general wear and tear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they don't really say. That's the crazy part. Like, uh, he he'd had a triple bypass back in the day, um, back in 2003. Oh, quintuple bypass. And then he had emergency heart t- surgery in 2021. You know, you're in Skinner. You've done everything. And you escaped death in a plane crash. Yeah, he, so, you know, shout out to Gary Rossington, the last surviving one who died. Sad times, but that's the end of it. Yeah. Sad, sorry for his family. Um, he was a, he was a cool dude in the, um, documentary. He was, he was likable. He just, I love that he had no answers when they're like, Hey, how come you guys did this? He'd be like, boy, man, I don't know. You know, you just kind of go with it. (laughs) He's a smart guy. He just, that part didn't really seem to, um, resonate. Update. Here's our little Zuckerberg update. Yeah. After losing billions of dollars on the metaverse. Mark Zuckerberg, he's launching a top-level team at Meta to develop AI products for WhatsApp. Do you use what? I don't even know what that is. No, Lewis does. Lewis says he uses it when he's in Europe. Whatever. What does that mean? Yeah. I don't get it. It's a messaging app. It's a message, like Snapchat? No, like messaging. Like, like text messaging. Yeah. Well, what's the appeal? Why not just text? Oh, you don't have to pay for it. Oh, that's why I use it in Europe then. So he's going to develop uh, AI products for WhatsApp, Messenger, and Instagram. Oh, Mark. <laughs> listen, listen. The children have moved on to TikTok. Yeah. 
they like Instagram. Like my nieces always like my videos I post. I see they're always, but they prefer the ticky tacky. Yep. Uh, after chasing the metaverse, Meta is now buying into the AI hype. Uh, the tech giant will be creating a new top level product focused on generative AI, AI that can create content. Well, why would really to focus on building delightful experiences around this technology into all of our different products over the longer term, we'll focus on developing AI's personas that can help people in a variety of ways. He added, he didn't specific, didn't specify in the post what top level meant because he has no idea what he's saying. Um, <laughs> wow. yeah, he's, I mean, they've lost billions on the metaverse. Um, it cost them 13.7 billion in 2022. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. And by the way, he just cut the price of his Q verse. What are those things called? You know, the goggles. This is why, this is why you shouldn't have a young child. Where are your goggles? <laughs> what? Get your goggles. We're going to the car. <laughs> Come on. What is the headset? It's like the virtual reality headset. Yeah. VR has it. Yeah. He's cut the cost almost in half because wow. no one was going to pay it. No, no. Th- my nephew Kevin's running around with the knockoff. It's totally fine. Super happy. It was so real. I mean, I, I almost vomited on his quote roller coaster. I had to take <laughs> the thing off. I'm like, whew, uh, I hadn't even been drinking. Um, <laughs> They laid off, Meta laid off 11,000 people in November, and they promised 2023, that's what my coconut says, is going to be a year of efficiency. Mm -hmm. They're looking to monetize more revenue streams. It's a launch paid subscription for Facebook and Instagram called Meta Verified. He's he's ripping off Elon's idea that didn't work either. If you're going to hack somebody, (laughs) take what worked. (laughs) Steal the idea that was good. Not the one that everybody was like, what? You You want me to pay for a blue check? (laughs) Okay. Well, do I have one? I already have one. Um, It starts at $11.99 a month if purchased via a web browser, Zuckerberg announced last Sunday. The move, which is similar to the Twitter blue, could rake in $2 billion. Do you think my parents are going to give a shit about being verified on Facebook? No. No, No, as long as they can log on. Right. (laughs) Unless you're going to prevent people from doing that, and then you you know what you're going to have? Quitters. Right. People like this lady. Aww. If you make it harder, I'm out. It's hard enough that this all got set up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, they found it. Uh, this is great. Okay, Easter Island. You know those crazy, weird, uh, I think they're called Mori or Mori. I never knew how to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. They look like giant, giant, Mini, um, the thing Greg Brady found on the island. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. I know, you didn't get the Brady Bunch in Canada. I, you no. shouldn't even be allowed to be in America. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's if you can't quote the yeah. Brady Bunch. <laughs> little tiki, what are those called? Not totem poles, little tiki. They're tiny. I have no idea. Oh, what you're my God. About. Well, this, this is a global thing. It's not an American thing. I like in Hawaii, the little tiny, it looks Marches. like... Not a tiki torch. No, it's like a carved out little symbol of a of a god. A tiki god. A tiki god. All right, we'll go with that. <laughs> this pub this podcast doesn't guarantee any information no. is right. But they have extremely large ones on Easter <laughs> Island, and nobody can figure out what the fuck what they were, what they are, what they mean. They're fascinating looking. Uh, a new moai m o a i. That's all I'm saying. Moai. Was found a new one. Um, uh, Google it. M O A I. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Um, the recent tiki men. It measures five foot tall. It's my height. You should see. There's people in this picture. There's more than 900 across East Easter Island. Was it just art? Were they tombstones? Oh yeah, I see them. Yeah. The tallest one measures 33 feet. The statues weigh between three to five tons. They represent the history of the Rapa Nui people. They were the islanders' de- deified ancestors. They're iconic worldwide, not just in America. We don't have any in Canada. No, you don't. We have totem you poles. have none. We got totem you poles. have totem poles because yeah. you had your First Nations, also known as Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Native mm. Native. Mm-hmm. They represent fantastic archaeological heritage of the island. It's because of the drought. 
They found it in a riverbed. Oh. Yeah, just now. Uh huh. They didn't even know that one. Um, some were damaged because it was a forest fire. That's sad. Given the current weather conditions and likelihood of further evacuations, more Moai discoveries are all but certain. We finished a lot of mapping and documentation of the quarry between 2018 and 19. What we found is there's a lot more evidence of more quarrying on the outside than we originally thought. 100% there's going to be more. So they found a little guy, a five foot tall guy. Oh. I mean, the tallest one's 33 feet tall. So this was like a baby one. Yeah. But it's cool they found it. I think it's great. Yeah. Thank you for the lesson. There's a little something. You'll know them when you see them. Everybody knows the picture. I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a chart. Um, this is crazy. This is the holy shit. Back in 2012, only with this, this is why it makes me laugh, because this all happened at a Walmart, where all freakish things of nature happen yeah. at a Walmart. Usually in the freezer section. The freezer section or the parking lot. My yeah. mom was walking. She was snuck up to Walmart. She's not supposed <laughs> to be there. My dad doesn't support it. She had to went in for something. And these redneck hillbilly Ozark guys, and they were like just mouths full of dip, you know, spitting in a can. <laughs> They, I won't say how they said it, but they asked my mom if she wanted to have sex. What? <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> they had the flatbed open on their truck, and they were just sitting out there drinking beers. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, at first I was so shocked because they said it in a much cruder way than that, but they were laughing, so she's... <laughs> But she said, I couldn't tell if they meant it. And I said, I turned around and I said, she said something along the lines of, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm 76. <laughs> oh, oh, crazy things happen at Walmart. I'm like, wow, what an exciting trip to Walmart, Mom. <laughs> um, back in 2012, Michael Scavarla was running to Walmart in Arkansas for milk when he spotted a huge insect on the, on the side of the building. Its wingspan was nearly two inches across and he studies insects, so he took it home and forgot about it. But then in 2020, he showed it to students in his class. Then they realized it was something far more expected, a giant lacewing. He found a bug that hasn't been seen in eastern North America for 50 years. Wow. Of course it would be at the Walmart. Of course. We all realized that this inse insect was not what it was labeled. Um, the wide wingspan was the clue that him and his students spot. He kept keeps bugs in a thing, and then he shows people his collection. It's gratifying to know the excitement doesn't dim. The wonder isn't lost. Here we are making a true discovery in the middle of an online lab course. Oh, they did it online. <laughs> it was once widespread this bug, but it mysteriously disappeared from eastern North America sometime in nineteen in the nineteen fifties. They suspect the disappearance may have been due to pollution, artificial non-native predators, or a number of other factors. How about that truck that used to go through our subdivision just sh throwing bug spray out over everything that yeah. we, and we're rolling around in the grass. <laughs> Lick it. See what it tastes like. <laughs> Maybe that shit killed them. Um, it's the first time it's ever been found in Arkansas. It, says, it suggests there might may be relic populations of this large. It's a Jurassic era insect yet to be discovered. The Arkansas Walmart is located in the Ozark Mountains. The area is Walmart. understudied as a biodiversity hotspot. Oh my God. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a big old thing. It looks like something, honestly, every time I've been in Houston. Houston is where I can honestly say I've seen the biggest bugs in my life. Like shit that will fly at you on a golf course, we have to duck. No way. A bug, yeah. <laughs> Just a winged, giant winged ass. Um, Holy shit, they found. See these things when I say the when I say when just remember they're just releasing the articles now so we're it's not that we're behind termites we're we're on time don't yeah. you worry I got you good. in the summer of 2022 a team of archaeologists made an extraordinary discover discovery in a remote region of China the team led by Dr. Ling Chen I'm never good at that Liang okay. Liang mm -hmm. Liang Chen has been investigating the site in the Yunnan province where they stumbled upon a cache of bones that appear to belong to a creature of immense size. Dragons. T-Rex. No. An initial analysis, analysis of the bones suggested they were the remains of a dragon, a mythical creature that has been part of Chinese folklore oh, for centuries. So but Dr. Chen and her team were determined to approach a discovery 
from a scientific perspective. In other words, we're not going to do the Kathleen Madigan route and go, I fucking found a dragon. <laughs> we're going to do a little science and slow this down. I'll be like, don't slow it down. Tell people. Um, and they were set about collecting as much data as possible in order to determine the true nature of the creature that had left these bones behind. The evacuation was a grueling process requiring the team to work in extreme heat and challenging terrain, but they persevered using a state-of-the-art equipment to carefully extract each bone from the site. As the bones were removed, they were transported to a lab for analysis where the team began to piece the puzzle together. First surprise when the bones were radiocarbon dated. The results suggested the creature had lived around 1,500 years ago, a time when dragons were believed to have roamed the earth. Amazing. 1,500 years ago ain't that long. No. Not really. As they dug, dug deeper, they began to realize that the creature had uncovered was unlike any dragon described in myth or legend. For one thing, yeah. For one thing, the size of the bones was truly staggering. The creature appeared to have been about 60 feet long. Oh, my God. Making it one of the largest animals to ever lived. Its bones were also unusually heavy and dense, suggesting the creature had been incredibly strong and powerful. It appeared to have had wings that were much smaller than those of a typical dragon. This led the team to hypothesize that the creature may have been capable of flight, but in a different way than the mythical dragons of folklore. The, I'm telling you, they found a, a real goddamn dragon. <laughs> it was also covered in scales, but not the kind of scales that would have allowed it to breathe fire. Oh, or other supernatural abilities. Instead, the scales appear to have been designed for protection, suggesting that the creature may have faced serious predators in its environment. They began to discover, come up with a new theory about the creature. Rather than a dragon in the traditional sense, they believed that the bones belonged to a previously unknown species of giant petrosaur, a type of flying rec reptile that lived during the same period as dinosaurs. Well, that's a dragon. Right. A flying reptile, to me, a is a dragon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unless, like, iguanas are going to start flying. And then they're tiny dragons. <laughs> um, they continued their work. Um, in the end, they've decided that it's probably... It's because they have no other word for it. The giant petrosaur. I'm saying that wrong. I'm sure representing okay. It's a reminder of the importance of curiosity and open-mindedness. And that's what this podcast is about. Yes, yes. Maybe it's possible. Dr. Chen and a team had shown it's only by challenging da, 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 and doing so we believe we gained a greater appreciation. And I have one more. Holy shit, they found it. I have a lot this week. Yeah, some weeks, you know, you never know. This one's pretty cool. I love um, the Great Lakes. I'm kind of obsessed with the Great Lakes. I mean, I like little lakes, you know, man-made lakes. But the Great Lakes kind of freak me out because they are huge and they can turn into like ocean-type Lakes, yeah. <laughs> there's the science. Yeah, there's my science. This lake, at any minute, might turn into a, an ocean lake. Now, what is an ocean lake? Exactly. Here we go. But, like, so many large, large, large boats have gone missing. I mean, sunk, not like Bermuda Triangle things. In the Great Lakes. <laughs> and then they're never found. And the... I'm like my friends, Mary and Tommy live in Oswego, New York, mm -hmm. and it's on the lake. And in the winter, when the waves come up and they, they freeze on the rocks, it's just so violent compared to what a lake would ever do. Yeah. That you're, but then in the summer, you know, Lake Michigan and Chicago, hi, I'm going to my kayak, you know, but come, come February. Anyway, 1869 shipwreck vessel of, with a checkered pass found in Lake Superior. Okay. 144. Uh, shipwreck searchers, wait, 144 shipwreck searchers are calling a bad luck bar and queen team was found underwater in Lake Superior. 144 foot long shipwreck. Wow. That's a big ass boat. It's a big boat. A ship known as, the ship known as the Nucleus sank for good on September 14th, 1869, but it had a checkered pass said Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum in its news release Wednesday. It sunk twice before that incident and had left that it that left it underwater in Lake Superior in 1854. It rammed another ship in Lake Huron. Who's driving this thing? <laughs> God dang. A drunk. It must be a drunk, right? <laughs> um 
these ships were popular in the 1800s with three or more masts that used specific style of sails. The ship was apparently carrying a load of iron in September 1869 when it was caught in a bad storm began to take on water. The crew abandoned ship after the leak became too severe. Okay, well, September, the water's not that cold. But it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the crew was later rescued and no one died. Um, it's one of the oldest ships to have gone down, down along Lake Superior's, quote, shipwreck coast. The wreck was found under 600 feet of water using the sonar, using sonar, uh, a remotely operated vehicle owned by the Great Lake Shipwreck, uh, Shipwreck Historical Society helped positively identify it. It's in good condition. Wonderful. Yeah. Now here's a question. Do you? Do you pull 144 feet? The Titanic was 825. The Titanic was 800. Yeah, well, my boat's only 27. It's a quarter. So, it's well, the mass make it look bigger. The question is, do you leave it? Nobody died. So I don't think it, of it as like a, a burial spot. Nobody died. So I say we bring it up. Yeah. yeah. If a lot of people died. Carefully. Yeah. Here's some news. News, news, news. We're moving on to news. Okay. A lot of you might be interested in this. In the United States, murderers stand a 50% chance of getting away with it. Not in my court. That, well, that might, <laughs> that might change your mind about maybe killing somebody. Yeah. You got a 50-50 chance of getting away with it? Exactly. Everybody assumes people are going to get caught. Because yep. I read in Washington, D.C., I read this a long time ago, something like 75% of murders are not solved. So I wanted to pitch a TV show where we are the police department that never solves anything. Like, and we go up to like, wow. say it's like some crack house and we know the evidence is in there. Mm -hmm. If me and you are the cops, I go, I, I ain't going in there. No. I make $85,000 a year. I'm not walking in a crack house. And that's how the murders don't get solved. Right. But then in my show, one time of the season to keep the show interesting, they solve one. Oh. But it's by accident. Like somebody comes in and just tells them. Right. <laughs> we got a confession. Ring the bell. That counts. <laughs> the tip bell. Unprecedented increase in U.S. homicides are being met with the lowest ever clearance rate, leaving at least half of the killings unsolved. Analysis of the FBI data shows that 71% uh, of homicides were deemed solved in 1980, dropping to an all low to only about 50% in 2020, the last time the data uh, was compiled. We're on the verge of being the first developed nation with the majority of homicides to go uncleared. A graph by the group shows that the clearance rate was even higher in 1980, seemingly as high as 90% in 1965. Wow. 90% were solved. That's crazy. And they didn't even have the tools or technology. Nope. They didn't even have, have they didn't have DNA. Nope. Well, but think of the population. The bigger the village, the more idiots. Our village is much larger. <laughs> oh. Speaking of that, we have to talk about Murdoch next. Um, just know, so, you know, I don't need to go through all the stats, but if you want to kill someone, if there's anybody on your list, um, it could also be the standards for making an arrest have gone up. Some of the tricks they were using in 1965 are no longer available. Yeah, to an extent, but I say it's a trade-off. Yeah. They could just do whatever they wanted kind of back then, the cops, for the most part, yeah. and now they can't. But you also have DNA and, and uh, a database of fingerprints that before didn't exist. You'd have to go in your town and then blah, blah, blah. A lot. Yeah. A lot happened. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't criticize them because as a cop, I wouldn't want to do all that. But I'm also, I would never be the detective lady. No. No. I'd be the cop who has the easy gig. Like, what's the easy <laughs> gig? I'll go down on parade day and make sure the traffic's good. Okay? Thanks. <laughs> 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 Speaking of news, we can't, I forgot. I was going to bring do this up top, but the Murda, uh, what's Alec, Alec, however you say Alec. his name. Mm -hmm. Boom, guilty, guilty, guilty. I've seen some of the jurors interviewed. Apparently when they went back, uh, 10, no, nine were convinced he was guilty out of the gate. Uh -huh. Two, nah, no, two were no, and one was undecided. Okay. Somehow in 45 minutes. They wrapped it up and told those people, get on board, we're tired of being here. Just come on. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck else would have done it? But big shout out to Mandy Matney. I'll stop singing Mandy's praises, but um, she'll find something else. 
She'll find something else. Well, she's she still got lots on this. What about the boy that died on the street? What about um, the maid, the, the housekeeper that we're still going to... I just sounded like my dad. The maid, the stewardess, um, the gal Friday. <laughs> exactly. Um, those are all still ongoing. The housekeeper's death, the, the kid, and then there's another thing. Well, who's financial crimes? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Buster, I don't. I can't feel that it's okay. You can't talk shit about the only kid left alive. I can. You can? Yeah. All right. Well, you're out partying. Well, apparently, him yeah. and his father went somewhere in South Carolina and got super hammered at some bar two months after supposedly all this happened. Right. That does not make sense to me. No. And then people go, well, you can't judge. You don't know. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm judging. Here I am, you sitting here doing what you say I can't do. But I had it on the phone because I was like, oh, my God. we were Me and Michael were in that bar mm -hmm. and getting food. And I was like, ah, oh, the verdict, the verdict. <laughs> and I learned, I'm pretty proud of myself that I learned quickly how to go to it on YouTube. Nice. Live. Cool. And there it was. Um, he'll, he'll appeal. Oh, and then the judge, this was the creepiest thing ever. The way he said it, too, the way he spoke, he goes... I believe that Maggie and Paul, that's the wife and the son that he shot. Who shoots their own kid? I mean, meth heads don't even do that. That's a real sociopath. But he goes, I believe they visit you at night and they visit you in the day and remind you of the last look that they had in your eyes before you did this. And they will continue to do so. Yes. It was the way he said, and they will continue to do so. Like, he just knew it. Yeah. Like, he was God himself. Like, not in an arrogant way, just like he believes. I'm like, I w I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Um, Alex, like, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to people that should not be talking out loud anymore. Alec Murdoch. He should have never taken the stand. But all most narcissists want to. Um, Prince Harry. Oh, I, I should have a royal update, but they don't really do enough to cut, 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 count as a segment God. of this show. Moron. He's got, who is advising him? Nobody. Nobody. She is. No, I don't think <laughs> Megan's doing it because at this point it's not positive. No. And I think she's a pretty good, uh, <laughs> she can guide herself through the waters of how to make shit look at this guy. I cannot, I want to sit down with him and go, Harry, whatever your last name is, I don't know. You're just Prince Harry. Right. Do they have last names? Yeah, they got like eight names. They're all Germans. Everybody right. forgets that. That's all my dad hollers at to TV when they're on. He has one. And I mean, I don't really like any of them. They're royal. It's ridiculous. As an Irish person, I can't get on board. Oh, Whoa, that's his full name. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. Prince Harry, Duke of, I know Duke of Sussex. Sussex. Henry Charles Albert. Those are all still first names. Duke of Sussex. <laughs> Stop Earl repeating Duke of Sussex. Earl of Dumbarton. Earl of Kilkeel. Kill. Well, then not one of those things was a last name. Doesn't matter. The House of Windsor is his last name. Windsor. No. It's Baron Kilkeel. Baron Kilkeel. Bullshit. No, Henry. it's not. Yes, it's not. Ba it's not Harry Baron Kilkeel. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. I'm gonna put it in the show. On their website. All right, I, I'll, I will do some serious research into his last name, oh, Termites. Oh. I quit. Harry did a special event. This is why I want to sit down and it won't tell Harry. Harry, um, all of us have problems. All of us have issues. Um, but there's a reason therapy's private. <laughs> the reason is none of us want to hear about your shit. Right. We want you to take care of it. And then we hope you're happy and you move on. Unless you're in group therapy. And then it's not private, but it is private because it's only within that tiny group. Exactly. Oh, he won't. He won't move on. He will not move on. No. This was crazy. Prince Harry, this happened over the weekend, and I printed this out before, is set to unpack his experience with a controversial trauma expert on Saturday during a virtual attend, a virtual event in which attendees can submit questions to the former royal to answer. Um... 
he will join Canadian doctor and author Gabor Mate for an intimate co- hold on for an intimate conversation to which royal fans can purchase tickets for thirty three ninety nine. This is what you've come down to. You're hawking your own therapy for thirty four bucks online. Oh, the publisher Random House said. Oh, and then he t- talks about his mom dying, dude. We all know, like. I'm very sorry that happened. Mm-hmm. Trauma, trauma. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry about that. And I'm not even going to do the comparison thing. No. no, because you do live in a $15 million mansion in Montecito. Your whole life could be a whole lot worse in a, a mobile home in the Ozarks. Trust me, because mm-hmm. I know people that live in those. Maybe and it, some mobile homes are getting nice, just for the record. But, um, <laughs> uh, no, they are. Um, he, he did this you get a copy of his book no thanks i'm good um you know they're not he's gonna become his great uncle and how do you not see that there are movies made about the man whole movies you can go watch go huh what my relatives do (sighs) then breaking news in the royal front charles whatever his last name is he kicked him out of frogmore cottage I love the name Frogmore. I don't know why. I'd have merch. Well, I'd open a bar. I'd open. The, I'd make part of it a bar, and then go. You're drinking at Frogmore Cottage. Would you like a Frogmore shirt? And then I'd have a T-shirt that had tiny frogs all over it, drinking tiny, tiny beers. <laughs> He's evicted him. The couple believed it's cruel because they said they used their money to renovate. You don't have any money. You have no money. You. It's like when I hear my nieces and nephews goes. They'll go, well, I use my money on that. That is their money. Right. It's their first communion money. It's, their, it's, it's everything. They save their money. Their birthday money, yes, you do. Jack, you have X amount. Kevin, you have X amount. Harry, you have money from working in the military. Where'd that go? That's already spent. Right. Megan had whatever money mm-hmm. from being on Suits or whatever that show was. Yep. Um, he's talking about his mother's money. Right. Diana died. He got a shit ton of money. And then he said, well, my father's always controlled the purse strings. You're like 40. (laughs) Can't. What? He wants an allowance. (laughs) God damn. Stay in the military. Uh, You should get a paycheck and a meal. Um, Now, now here's the thing. If you want to count it as your money, they spent 2.8 to 3 million redoing it. Then Charles, you give them back the money and go... Here's your fake money that wasn't your money to begin with, but I'll give it back to you because you spent it on this. And he, there's rumor as he wants to move Andrew, bad boy Andrew, into the cottage. And Andrew's oh. having none of it. Oh. Oh. And they've been invited to the coronation as of yesterday. Will they go? Oh, yeah, she'll go on the 11th hour. She's not going to miss that. I don't know. They're not going to be treated like William and Kate. No. Because they're not William and Kate. And it has nothing to do with what your personalities are or what it's the, it's the role. That's the deal. This is Disney. You were assigned the role of Tatiana. And you left. You abandoned the dragon. I just love how any of us get involved in any of this. Like they're, they're Disney characters. I, why I'm amused by it all. I don't really care about him or her or whatever. (laughs) I hope their kids grow up better. Like, a normal, it's not going to be a normal life. Not if you're raising a $15 million mansion in Montecito. Oh, God. I didn't even get to go to Montecito until I was like 45. And you had your own car and your own gas. I had my own car and I drove up to my friend Ron White's house and I found a key under the mat and went, let myself in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was fine. Great. Yeah. Okay. This is news. <laughs> this is so bizarre and it's happening. In the state of Tennessee, Uh, right here, Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee, okay? (laughs) Bill Lee is on TV all the time, and he is your quintessential Southern. He wears um, one of the, like, lumberjack shirts. What are those called? Like, no, not Carhartt. Plaid flannel. Yeah, 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 yeah. he wears those shirts. It is a... Yeah, Lumberjack, Paul Bunyan shirts. He wears those in the ad, and he's always like a down-home talker, and I'm Governor Bill Lee, and I want to keep this state with the family values I grew up with, and then you see him walking around the the woods. Or, smoking a pipe. Yeah, <laughs> smoking a 
corn cob. Yeah, corn cob pipe. Um, banging spoons on his legs. No, I'm kidding. He's not playing the spoons. Um, he's just, but he does. Very, very, like, this isn't really about politics. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not, because there's so many politics and everybody's tired of it, including myself. But he signs the first of its kind bill restricting drag shows. (laughs) And me and my sister were like, okay, we don't understand why there would ever be a drag show at a school Anyway, but we went to Catholic schools. I don't know what's going on with these public heathen people. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever have a drag show in a Canadian grade school? No. No? No. Now, I would have liked it. I thought it'd be cool. I think it'd be great, but I can understand why parents. Okay, but we're not talking about school. Because I said, is he he talking about, you know. What's he talking about? Here's what he's talking about. Governor Bill Lee. And you know what, for the record, one of the greatest shows I've ever seen is the drag show in Las Vegas at Senior Frogs. I forget what it's called, but if you ever go to Vegas... It's for, uh, um, RuPaul. Ru- no, it's not RuPaul's Drag Ways. I don't think it is. I don't think it's called. No. No, that's at Harrah's. Mm. Right, whatever. Senior. Senior Frogs Drag Show. You can go like at 10 or 11 or 12 and they have champagne built into the tables... It's the drag brunch, just to, whatever. Yeah. One of the greatest shows I've ever seen. Yeah. One of the more amusing drag shows I've ever seen in my life was if you go into East St. Louis drinking late, which you should be careful if you do that. There was a bar over there that it would have, it was like a everything bar, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But they would have a drag show on like uh, weird nights, like Tuesdays or whatever. And me and my friend Ralph went over there. I didn't even know we were, I was going to see this. But it was like closeted drag guys. They were like farmers from Southern Illinois. Stop it. Yeah. So it was super strange. And they would come out and go, hi, my name's Bill. I'm a farmer over in Bellevue. And tonight I will be performing Ethel Merman. I'm like, what is going on? And then he would come out and open the show with God bless America. And I'm like, yeah, that is right. God bless America that Bill can do what he wants to do on a Tuesday in East St. Louis. Um, but anyway, I just don't see anything wrong with a drag show. I, I, no. not to politicize something, I just do not understand. I don't think it should be in a grade school, but I don't think we, you don't get your own shows in grade school. No. Any kind of shows. No. no. Nobody ever came and performed at my grade school. Lip syncing is for the devil. Lip syncing <laughs> is of the devil. <laughs> um, oh, God. It will crimp, he signed into Bill a law last Thursday, that will criminalize some drag performances. The first of its kind legislation will ban adult cabaret entertainment on public property or in locations where it can be viewed by minors. So that means parades. That means pride parades. That means um, public property. Does that... Well, you could still have it in a private bar. Well, if it's 21 and older. Right. Such entertainment, according to the measure, listen to how how old the people are who wrote this. According to the measure, includes topless dancers, go-go dancers. Really, Dad? Go-go dancers. (laughs) Exotic dancers, strippers, male or female impersonators, or similar entertainers. The law takes effect April 1st. Calls for first uh, offenders to be slapped with misdemeanors. Subsequent against, uh, offenses would be classified as felonies and could result in prison sentences for up to six years. Wow. Because you dress like the opposite sex? That's bizarre. Who cares? Yeah. On the list of shit to care about. This is not it. Oh, my God. Um, they're saying, the supporters say it's necessary to safeguard children. Where are these children seeing this stuff? Exactly. At a pride parade? Did you accidentally run into a pride parade? Like, were you just out for a walk? I went, oh, shit, my kids can't see this. The pride parade is pretty well advertised in every city where you know where it's going to be and when. Because you don't want to get caught up in the traffic if it's not your thing. Traffic. This this bill gives confidence to parents that they can take their kids to a public or private show and they will not be blindsided by a sexualized performance. Where do they think this is happening? I mean, my whole life, I never got blindsided 
by a sexualized performance. <laughs> Where the fuck are you going? Um, it's supposed to protect children. How did I make it through my whole life till I was 21 and went with Ralph to the east side? Never got blindsided no, by a drag queen. I would hate to see that. Or if they were, if I did get blindsided by a drag queen, they were so good at it, I didn't notice. You were what? Yeah. Which, and I'm sure that's happened. Mm -hmm. and then they got but then here's the greatest. Uh, and then the, the people against it have all the reasons that I'm basically I'm saying, plus a shit ton more. But then here's the ultimate, ultimate irony. Oh, Bill. Tennessee governor to restrict drag shows as photo appears of him in drag. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. He said he wants to make it for anyone to engage in adult cabaret performances on public property or in a place where children might see them. Uh-huh. Something happens. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I'm putting it out there. Something happens. Uh. There's a yearbook photo circulating online, and it appears to show him in high school in 1977 dressed up as a woman. The photo uh, prompted some local Democratic politicians and activists to accuse the governor of having a double standard. Wow. Um, oh, he said it was just an in innocent powder puff thing. I don't care what you want to define it as. You're dressed like a chick, and you were in public. Exactly. You yeah. did it. Yeah. You already did it. Just the ultimate. It's okay if I do it. That whole bullshit. Um, wow. he was asked if he remembered dressing a drag in 1977. He said it would be ridiculous to conflate something like that to sexualize entertainment in front of children. I have to find out what happened. Right. What caused this? Uh -huh. This is not normal. No. Something spurred this. <laughs> the internet spurred it. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, did some drag queen show up at a, a grade school uninvited? You shouldn't punish all for one. No. No. You have to sit down and explain to that person, this is for nighttime. <laughs> this is for that. Well, you just said you like a drag brunch. Well, do I do like a drag brunch, but yeah. it's nighttime. It's classified as adult entertainment. And, and the food's and always good. <laughs> and it's dark in there. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. I'll giggle it. I'll find out, termites. We'll I'll get into it. Um... <laughs> This, um, get a load of this. Adidas has five hundred million dollars worth of Kanye West sneakers and no good options. No. <laughs> Before Kanye went on his racist, anti-Semitic rant, right. I did buy my uh, nephew a pair of Yeezys, and. Uh, he still has them. They were too expensive. It's ridiculous. I mean, we bought them before he did that. Yeah. It's my whole thing. If Stevie Nicks was accused of eating a baby, would I still go if I already bought the concert ticket? Well, it depends on when she supposedly ate the baby. They believe it destroyed its... Uh, this After Michael Vick, mm -hmm. they had to get rid of the Air Zoom Vick. Why would you destroy him? When there's tons of kids in underdeveloped countries that do not have a shoe. Right. Okay, it's terrible, whatever these people did. Michael Vick, whoever, whomever. Th that does not outweigh the fact a kid needs a pair of shoes. Right. And I think even the groups that were targeted, mm -hmm. I would think, I'll call Lou. He's in charge of all my Jewish opinions. <laughs> Louis, <laughs> since Kanye West seems to... But Kanye's also just flat out crazy. Yeah. Like, oh. Adidas has a similar di uh, dilemma with the Yeezy line, observers say, except on a scale unseen in the fashion industry. Months after cutting ties with the rapper and the fashion designer Kanye West over his flagrant anti-Semitism, the German company on February 9th warned it would be looking at massive losses it couldn't sell its inventory. Well, here's the other thing you could do, Adidas. The nice thing would be to give them away. Right. It's a lot of money. I get it. $500 million. But sure make them half price because exactly they're not cheap to begin with. No. Um, raising questions about its option for the now tinted, tainted brand, including, including literally burning the shoes. That would be what in Catholic school I would taught would be a sin. I don't care right. what happened with those shoes. People need them. Mm -hmm. And you just, wow. Mm -hmm. um, they thought they re could recoup the vast majority of the losses by rebranding the distinctive shoes, which retail roughly from 200 to 600 
and selling them at a discount. The predicament offers a glimpse of what happens when the fashion line meets a sudden end. Uh, they don't know what they're going to do. Because it's, it's, it's half a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, Adidas was the slowest one to move to when, when he did that, which as the Germans, maybe you should be the first ones. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Just saying. They could sell it at a discount without the label, and then they'd be called zombie Yeezys. Then the kids would want those. What? Adidas could still f move forward. They have a plan to sell the merchandise at a discount uh -huh. without the label, uh -huh. okay. transforming them into what he calls zombie Yeezys. I like that. Yeah. yeah. But that's a qu quite a risky proposition. It could backfire on them from a PR perspective. It would still look like they were profiting off of a collaboration with someone who made blatant anti-Semitic statements. You know what? I would ask the Jewish, the Jewish leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay, get meet with them. Do you guys think it's a good idea that we I, just give it to underdeveloped nations? I think they would agree. Too. Yeah. Yep. Why can't you just sit down with the people that were offended? Talk this out. You need a Libra over there. That's what you people need. Um, another option is to destroy, destroy the shoes. No, no, no. Um, I'll let you know, termites. I will let you know. I forgot I have an update, too. I didn't print it out. The Girl Scout cookies? Uh -huh. The raspberry, what was oh, it called? God, yeah. Raspberry, their new one? Yes. Well, there's some dirty birds out there. Raspberry Rally. Raspberry Rally, they were described as raspberry thin mints, mm -hmm. from what I read. That's the newest one. Mm -hmm. Well, they're sold out. Yep. And some of the moms... Or dads, whatever. Or maybe drag queens. I don't know. Maybe the drag queens are doing it. Let's blame them for that too. Um, <laughs> they're being sold online. A box is going for 100 bucks. Worth it. <laughs> I don't care for raspberries, so it, it ain't my thing. But if there were no thin mints left and there was one box online for it, yes, I would, yeah, I would be like, I have to do it. I have to, I have to. Um, yeah, so I don't know. The Girl Scouts are super pissed. Yeah. I'll read you the story next week, but that's an update on that. If you didn't get them, I told you here on this podcast, termites, they're available. Go get them. Yeah. So hopefully you did if you wanted them. <laughs> Raspberry cookies just don't sound right. They were. They weren't. They, I went up to my grocery store and the kids didn't have any. Well, I didn't really ask. Well, Maybe they had some. I don't know. I just bought thin mints. And how do these moms get them? I guess that's the question. They ordered them months ago when the kids got their stuff, oh. I bet. Yeah. Um, all right, termites. Wow. Do you want to hear a weird story before we go? Yeah. I love a weird story. This is very, very weird. Yeah. Um, and I am only familiar with this because Ron White, uh, my friend, mm -hmm. became successful and bought a house in Montecito. I don't even think I'd ever been to Santa Barbara. I knew it was up there, but I didn't care to go. Okay. I always just went past it. I thought it was rich people, and that's fine, but I, you know, there's only like three hotels. I have gone, don't want to brag, to the San Ysidro Ranch, and I only went there because there's a bar, it's like the Angel Bar or something, then Ron and I went, and you see super famous people there. So, yeah, like, Harry and Megan have been on the slum around. But I don't even know why people would pay. The The property's nice, but the rooms, I was like, oh, my God. Not my thing. Plow and Angel. Plow and Angel, that's the name of the bar. But anyway, there's a Four Seasons up there. I one time I had a corporate gig, and I stayed there. And it was very nice. It's by the water. Um... But I did not know. Remember Beanie Babies? Yeah. Did we talk about this on the show already? No. Yeah, I did. Because remember I told you I was the one who was in charge of searching for him in airports? Oh, yeah. You told, yes, but not about Beanie Babies. But I didn't tell you about him. No. For nearly three years, an enigmatic billionaire has kept one of the most beloved and sought-off properties in the world closed. The Four Seasons Resort, the Biltmore in Santa Barbara. He owns it. The Beanie Baby guy, Ty Warner. Remember that name, yeah. guys? Ty Warner. Mm -hmm. Call it the house that Beanie Babies emptied. <gasps> oh. Now former employees, Santa Barbara residents, and vacationers of a certain stature, stature are starting to wonder when Ty Warner is going to release his stranglehold on the coveted space. Yeah. 
You may have already heard of Warner, but even if you haven't, you know who he is in an instant. Whether you've searched for the peanut, the elephant on eBay, or attached his signature tie emoji to a message to denote, thank you. You probably somehow have been influenced by the Chicago-based Beanie Babies tycoon. Chicago. He's from Chicago. He's a Midwest guy. He's a Midwest guy acting bizarre. Yep. And not in a positive way. Nope. Warner, who's worth an estimated five billion. Wow. He last granted a long-form interview to People Magazine in 1996. That's the last time anybody has spoken to this man from the press. 1996. This is where I think he's getting Howard Hughesy, and now I'm into it. Right. Now I want to know. <laughs> Besides an incident in, in 1997 when he threw out a pitch at a Cubs game, he threw out the first pitch, 97. So go to 2007, plus that math. I can't do it. 2017, that's 20 years. I mean, it's been 25 years since yeah. anyone's heard from him. Good math. That was pretty fast for me. Yeah. And it was correct. Yeah. Yeah, and, that I, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it like that. I was no. going 17, 19, 19, 19, 20. I did it without moving my fingers. Um, he was. Uh, he keeps such a freakishly low profile that nearly every article about him, the word reclusive pre- precedes the mention of his name, which has surfaced more often than not in recent stories of tax evasion convictions and high stakes relationship squabbles. Whoa. Yeah. So perhaps it's come as no surprise that the exclusive tycoon decided to shutter the most beloved property in his portfolio and continues to offer no explanation or reopening to this day. That's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, I would never pay for that four seasons because it's crazy. It's, it's like eight hundred dollars a night or some shit. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous when you can just go find a Marriott courtyard in Galena, just yeah. go up the town, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, rich people do. They're very, very, very rich. Right. But whatever, you could still go in the bar and have a drink. Mm-hmm. And I like their bar. Right. And it's right on the ocean, kind of. I mean, right, like outside on the ocean. But you're very, you can hear the water. It was great. Mm-hmm. And he's just, he didn't give a shit. Nope. First opened in 1927, the 206-room hotel has 22 beachside acres, which uh, abuts the oceanfront walkway of Channel Drive, blah, blah, blah. It resembles something of a Gatsby Goes West Coastal Retreat. Known for its sprawling gardens and red brook walkways that connect the Spanish revival <laughs> cabanas hidden around every corner. The hotel is not the kind of place where you bump into business travelers clad in lanyards and dress sneakers, <laughs> trailing airplane BO, trailing airplane BO from wrestling carry on and coach. Who wrote this? Gross. Yeah. No, this is a place of something else. So, anyway, they go on to describe the four seasons. We don't need all that. And then it's the history. So, um, eh. A decade after its completion in 1927, uh, Allied Properties purchased it and ran it for 40 years, Mm -hmm. from 36 to 76. Allied then sold the property to Marriott, which ran at the hotel until 1987. Then they sold the Four Seasons for $55 million. Billionaire Warner picked up the resort in 2000 for $150 million. So he paid $150 million for it. Now remember, he has $5 billion. So they say, all is, is, I got to Google it. Is it all off the Beanie Babies? And then I think, why can't we think of shit like that? That was psychotic. I mean, the whole thing. What if I just sold tiny frogs? (laughs) What is your frog thing today? They're just funny because Frogmore Cottage. I don't know. Um, This would be the crown. Listen to what he owns. This would be the crown jewel of Taiwan Properties Santa Barbara portfolio. He owes Sandpiper Golf Club. I've golfed there a million times. I I love every young man... And there's a couple women, but mostly it's dudes that works there. Um, they're all awesome. Albert. Uh, Albert, my friend Albert, if he's still there, shout out Albert. Uh, I don't live out there anymore, so I don't go. It was always reasonably priced. Um, it was pretty well maintained. Right. It wasn't private. It's a public course. Anybody can go. Great. So he owned that. He owns the San Ysidro Ranch. I mean, oh, my God. Montecito Club. I don't even know what that is. Ron might. And he owns the Four Seasons in New York. Wow. Yep. Uh, while his other properties remain open, both the Four Seasons hotels, both Four Seasons, suspended operations indefinitely in March, and they have not yet reopened. So he's blaming it on COVID, but come on, everybody else is open. Right now, there's no timeline. We're actively moving on improvements, but the timeline is still to be determined. 
The closure mystery begins to unravel slightly when Warner's Four Seasons properties are views as a set. While all of the billionaires' properties were first shuttered in tandem, only the Four Seasons remain closed. It's been reported uh, that they're in some kind of rift. I mean, that is so sad because not everybody can afford to stay there, but everybody can afford to go in and have a drink. Yeah, exactly. And it's a Spanish, like, mission in type thing. Great tile. Very, the, the tile, everything. Um, but he's, he's just a freak. I mean, why won't they? Um, there have been a lot of sad stories about a lot of employees losing their houses, uh, divorces, at least one suicide. The company takes a position they're still employed and will come back at some point. But we're not seeing evidence of that. It's been close to a thousand days already. So they're getting paid to stay close employed? Well, I don't think so. Right. So, but if you're not fired, you can't collect unemployment. Exactly. If you're not let go, and if you quit, you can't collect you cannot collect unemployment. Right. So they're screwed. Well, they somebody should sue them. Somebody but then again, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about housekeepers and bartenders and da, da, da. they probably think I can't afford a lawyer. But they should go get a lawyer and ask that guy to take the case on for nothing right. or that lady. Um, on a recent run, I stopped by to peek at the property while it still carries this zombified air of forced emp emptiness that immediately brings it one back to the early days of the pandemic. Shutdowns, the buildings, the pool, and the grounds are maintained. So someone's maintaining it. Um, the beloved property remains meticulously landscaped and smells like primrose mulched with shredded money. Huh. Huh. <laughs> it's just I never thought about the Beanie Baby guy. I didn't. Uh, now I'm going to be obsessed because now I think he's a Howard Hughes freak. He's also been in divorces. I'll go further on this one. Okay. I'll do a Mandy, Mandy deep dive on the, Put Mandy on, it. on the, well, those Beanie Babies were the bane of my existence for a while because everybody knew I flew and then they knew I was in airports and apparently there were super rare ones in airports and then I got into it myself and then I became addicted to the search and <laughs> I became a thing for like a whole fucking year. Every gift shop. I wouldn't, I never even got to like enjoy a drink at a beer, a bar because in an airport because I was just in gift shops looking for Beanie Babies. <laughs> that's, that's big. Yeah, yeah. Do you have the tiny elephant? Come on. But well, you have to know their name. <laughs> I know. You did. All right, termites. I am off this week to Red Bank and Huntington, New York. There's still a few. Uh, there's a few. Yeah. Is there a few? I thought we were sold out. No, they All right. released them. Oh, they released them. Okay. Yeah. So that. And then I'm going to stay in New York and do some podcasts and stuff for a couple days. I get to see Lewis. Very excited. Mm -hmm. Gonna make him go to this brunch I found, um, and then um, Memphis. After that, I'm fired up about Memphis Graceland Soundstage. In case you're wondering where that will be taking place, there. And then after that, Stand by. I think it's Milwaukee. Milwaukee and Wausau. Wausau, Wausau, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. Wausau. Yep. Milwaukee's on Friday. Wausau's on Saturday. And then Foxwoods in Boston. Mm -hmm. We added a show in Boston, a later show. And uh, there's tickets left for that one. There's nothing left for the early show. And then I always think, do I really want to be up that late? And that's why I, I, <laughs> I well, you know, in my younger days, I did two and three shows a night. But then you get tired. You know, like Jamie Lee Curtis said she didn't attend the Academy Awards because she goes to bed at 730. And I thought... <laughs> I would hilarious. too if I were you. If you can, and just snuggle right in and watch eleven episodes of Waco. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna get on the t-shirts this week. Oh yeah, the t-shirts. We haven't forgotten termites. No, we would do it. Um, but very busy. New websites launching. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm very grateful to the um the kids that have helped with all that. The younger uh, shirt. And there'll be a new t-shirt on there. And um. I can't wait to show you the video. I'm going to put it up. A oh, baby cat eating that grass. Some other termite had that thing. What are the odds? Weird. Yeah. And she said, oh, my cat loves it. This is what it should look like. And the stems were crazy. <laughs> and I said, well, I said to Lou, here's the thing. I've never grown anything successfully. So this will probably not work because I can't read instructions properly because there's something wrong with my mind. Well, you did it. I did it. Good for you. And four days I was gone. 
just things are like this high. They're like <laughs> six inches high. I was like, what the? Anyway, because I was checking everything in the house because the power went out and stuff. Um, the termites are raiding. And these termites, too, that brought me. There's three things in this box, and it couldn't sum my personality up more. Bigfoot for president. Mothman for president. Nice. Not a lot of people know about Mothman. <laughs> and, uh, and a Loch Ness Monster pin. I'll be using all three. And the box is adorable. All the termites have been rating. Oh, please go rate the special. Yeah, yeah it, it yeah. means stuff. Thank you. Yeah. You're doing it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I try to read all the YouTube comments and all that, but then sometimes I, I don't know. I'm going to put you in timeout. You can do that. All right. I'll get you in the I like the YouTube. I like to read stuff. Sometimes people are mean, but for the most part, nice. Yeah. What I do like now is somebody's mean is a termite. The other termites attack them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're free to say whatever you want. Nothing matters at the end of the day. Um, and I didn't get to watch the Chris Rock thing because I was working, but I'm going to try to watch that to see the Will Jada. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. All I know is you shouldn't be slapping people, period. In a Catholic school, if you slap somebody, nobody cares what your goddamn reason is. You're the one in trouble. All right, termites. Um, that's it. St. Patrick's Day is coming up, and I will be in Memphis. Memphis, Memphis, Memphis. And I will be off on Friday. So I will be carousing about because I'm going early. Well, not. I always go the day before if I have a show. Um, but I'm doing it. I'm getting down there. I know where I'm going. And uh, that's it. I'm going to go find a wonderful place for my coconut. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's really cool. Anyway, thanks, New Orleans Termites. Thanks, everybody. And ready? <laughs>